Hundreds are arrested in an EU encryption bust, the Earn It Act advances to the floor, and devs had access to expired Facebook data. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morris and this is ThreatWire for July 7, 2020. This is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. On to the news. A joint operation between European law enforcement agencies, Bedfordshire Police, the National Crime Agency, and the Eastern Region Special Operations Unit has helped in the arrest of 746 alleged criminals for drug dealing, money laundering, planning hits, and a lot more. The bust also included seizure of the equivalent to about 67 million USD in cash, 77 firearms, and two tons of drugs, along with 1,800 rounds of ammo, 28 million street Valium pills, 55 cars, and 73 luxury watches. Lots and lots of things. All sorts of things. Okay, but what does this have to do with security and privacy on the internet? Well, the NCA and the international law enforcement agencies have been working since 2016 on targeting an encrypted communications platform called EncroChat, partnering together to crack the protocol to track these criminals. As of two months ago, the collab ended in agencies in France and the Netherlands harvesting data from EncroChat and sharing it with Europol. Under an investigation called Operation Venetic, the agencies have been monitoring conversations and data within the platform covertly, unbeknownst to users. Now, this is the largest operation of its kind ever, and as of recording, EncroChat servers have been shut down. Now, EncroChat had about 60,000 users worldwide, 10,000 of those in the UK, and it was used for criminal activity as an encrypted communication platform for mobile phones. EncroChat was operated by a group outside the UK who was alerted to law enforcement surveillance on June 13th, and at which time they alerted users to throw away their phones. Now, these phones are not conventional Android or iPhones that consumers can buy on the market. While you can still buy them, they were Android-based phones purchased by users and pre loaded with VoIP calling functionality, a kill switch, and instant messaging for 1,500 euros for a six-month contract. GPS, camera, and mic capabilities were removed for anonymity. The NCA did not release technical details about how they cracked encryption, but they did state in a release that they processed the data, which helped identify and locate offenders with image and message analysis. Because EncroChat advertised its services as guaranteeing anonymity, criminals talked freely within the service about planned crimes with meticulous attention to detail. Because of this, law enforcement's monitoring brought them a field day of information, and this will likely rain down upon criminals for many years to come through the continuation of these investigations. I spoke on the Earn It Act back in March when it was originally introduced, but we now have an update. This bill was introduced by Senators Lindsey Graham, a Republican of South Carolina, and Richard Blumenthal, a Democrat of Connecticut, and it stands for Eliminating Abusive and Rampant Neglect of Interactive Technologies Act, and it would require tech companies to meet requirements for child safety online in order to get immunity from lawsuits. It holds tech companies liable for any child exploitation happening on their platforms online. But privacy advocates also argued that this bill, the way it was written, could also weaken encryption for average users. Dissenters have also stated the Earn It Act could be a thinly veiled attempt to target Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act of 1996, which protects free speech on platforms by protecting the platforms from liabilities on the content on their platforms, giving the company free will to choose what goes and does not go on their sites or applications. Well, last week on Thursday, the Senate Judiciary Committee unanimously advanced the bill. Due to early concerns, lawmakers did update the bill to say that tech companies could voluntarily choose to meet the standards in order to have those liability protections under Section 230. Democratic Senator Patrick Leahy of Vermont also updated the law so that companies will not be targeted just because they offer encryption. Critics are continuing to argue that even with the updates, the bill is 
too broad, saying that it will open up tech companies to a constant threat of litigation and will disincentivize them from offering encryption or defending encryption in courts. Since the bill is bipartisan, it does seem to have a lot more momentum than other proposals that have died on legislators' desks. It now awaits a floor vote. Before we hit story number three, I wanted to say thank you so much to my supporters over at patreon.com slash threatwire. Check out these amazing hush puppy perk level fur babies. They're so cute. They just got sent in last week. I love them. Keep them coming. Also, a new perk has been added. Now, as a subscriber, you will get access to action alerts only on Patreon. Anytime there's a new vulnerability that's announced or a new breach has occurred, I will share those details on Patreon so you can update, you you can patch, and you can find those flaws ASAP. There is so much to cover in security and privacy. I never have time to discuss every single story in these episodes. So if you want to see me cover more InfoSec news as an audio podcast, or even a second episode of Threatwire each week, check out the next Patreon goals to see how you can help make that happen. Even though Facebook was supposed to be cutting off certain data to third-party applications due to that old Cambridge Analytica scandal that we heard about like three years ago, on June 30th, the platform mentioned in a blog post that some applications may have continued to receive access to expired data. And Facebook also said that they fixed this issue. So what happened? Well, according to Facebook, the platform discovered that about 5,000 developers still had access to data on Facebook users long after after that data should have been expired and no longer accessible. In 2018, during the Cambridge Analytica incident, Facebook had announced that data would now expire if it had not been used by the user for 90 days. In a blog post, Facebook stated that in some instances, devs continued to have access to that content that was originally authorized by users, even if they had not used the app in over 90 days. They did not state how many users were affected, though. Now, the data was consistent with what users had originally authorized but it did not fall within Facebook's scope of their new terms of proper expiration. Facebook also stated in the post that they would attempt to tighten policies around third-party data collection, and if you do have a Facebook account, you could just delete it, or you can go into your settings and choose apps and websites to see what third parties have access to what data on Facebook. Before I leave, I want to say thank you so much to AB, Jamie, CZ Digitals, and Michael, who joined the Patreon team this week. Thank you to each and every one of you. You are awesome, and you are making this show possible. I appreciate you. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe. I'm Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet.